hospitality industry is at the front line in the battle for a sustainable world. Why? Because some people consider hospitality to be a frivolous endeavor. The environmental and social impact of what they consider to be a non-essential activity is under attack. For example, do you need to get on an aeroplane to go to a meeting when you could do it via Zoom? Why are you going abroad on holiday when we have perfectly good beaches here? How can you justify spending £90 on a dinner for two when that's more than enough money to feed a family for a week? And do you realise how much food, hotels and restaurants waste? It is specifically because we are at the front of the firing line that we must take the lead in the battle for a sustainable world. Furthermore, if we in the industry don't do that, governments and regulators will probably do it for us. And I guess we probably won't like their ideas. So Cleaning Up Hospitalities Act is what I'm going to be speaking with you about today. But first, let me address this school of thought that hospitality is non-essential. Because hospitality is essential. You know, this industry is one of the biggest and fastest creators of jobs anywhere and everywhere. From farms to cities to deserts, remote islands, even the polar circles. This industry can create opportunities where other industries cannot or may not be able to in the future. Take the Gulf region, heavily dependent on fossil fuels for their economy. But their major customers like Europe are turning to renewable power. So countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia are actively looking for alternative sources of exports and jobs. And guess what? They're turning to industries like hospitality even going so far in Saudi Arabia as to turn an oil rig into a theme park destination. I can't think of many other industries aside of hospitality that would find such a great alternative use for an oil rig, can you? So our industry is not only fast in creating jobs and big in creating jobs, but even after one of the worst pandemics facing humanity, COVID-19, according to WTTC, our industry still employs over 270 million people around the world. Not only one of the biggest meritocracies of the planet, but also one of the most diverse workforces on the planet too. And you know, we may not be high tech, but we are high touch. And our industry has the possibility of bringing people together to share cultural identities, to share cultural exchange. Therefore, we're an effective conduit to international understanding. And as high tech, namely AI and robots, increasingly are going to replace people in jobs, it's going to be the high touch industries like hospitality that will be looked to to create jobs for people in the future. So what a great industry. We don't want to jeopardize all this good because some people consider hospitality and travel to be an environmental evil. What we want to do is sustain the good while eliminating the environmental cost. To do that, we have to confront climate change. To have a future at all, we have to confront climate change. To do that, we have to focus on our carbon footprint, starting with our biggest polluters, our buildings. You know, according to UNEP, a, a, Almost 40% of CO2 emissions responsible for climate change are generated by the built environment. And a big proportion of those emissions comes from the energy that we use in buildings. Let's look at the hotels. Hotels <clears throat> among commercial buildings are the highest energy consuming buildings. We use more energy in a hotel building than retail offices do, more than uh, you know, manufacturing plants do, more than industrial warehouses do. The highest energy consuming commercial buildings are hotels. So if we want to start to tackle our carbon footprint, energy use in a building is a very good place to start. But it's not the only thing that matters. Water matters too. 
Take a look at this slide. As you can see, hotels consume more water than any other type of commercial building. This is a serious problem because water is a finite natural resource. And it's an especially acute problem in countries or areas where there is already a serious water shortage. Now this data and other data on food waste, for example, gives us a very clear picture of what we need to do. What is less obvious, but just as important, is how we clean up Hospitality's Act. And there's an important difference between the what and the how. Take electric cars, for example. What a great alternative to petrol and diesel vehicles when they're on the road, right? Because so long as the batteries have been charged using renewable power, they're not going to emit any CO2 emissions when they're driving on the road. But is that enough? Don't we need to consider how they were manufactured? What if the manufacturing process was harmful to the environment? And is it acceptable that young children are mining cobalt, which is used for electric car batteries, in countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo under terrible conditions? You see, there is an important difference between the what and the how. We also have to be mindful of the who we do business with. You know, COP is happening right now in Glasgow, not too far from here in London. And at COP, you will see most politicians are very keen on demonstrating their green credentials. They're focusing on business. So consequently, business is very keen on promoting its green credentials. And one obvious way to do that is to focus on suppliers, including the hotels, where their executives stay when they're traveling on business. So if a hotel wants that business, it will have to prove its green credentials. Sounds easy, right? Well, we're consumers too, hoteliers. We have to buy services and we have to buy goods as well. We have to put the people who are serving us those goods and services to account, just as we're held to account. We have to take the entire life cycle into consideration. So from cradle to cradle, how are those goods manufactured? How are those services manufactured? Ask the right questions and be mindful of that. Really important, consider the what, the how and the who. Where it's possible, we must buy locally. We must buy wisely. Where it's possible, we must hire locally and we must hire responsibly. We must also be mindful about how we tell our value story. And we have fantastic stories to tell as an industry. Take, for example, the role that many hospitality businesses play in protecting wildlife, protecting endangered species. You know, we have the power to turn poaching lands into conservation lands. But if we tell the story in the wrong way, then the consequences will be very grave. Now, here's an example of how not to tell our value story. When environmentalist Jay Vesterveld saw a placard in a hotel bathroom asking guests to reuse their towels in order to save the planet, he coined the term greenwashing. This was in 1986. He went on to demonstrate that the hotel's reuse of towels request wasn't part of an environmental strategy, it was part of a cost-saving exercise. Now, even if that hotel had good intentions, the way it went about telling its story caused serious reputational damage and greenwash branding. In fact, greenwash branding now is a very big deal because a lot of courts across the world, particularly in Europe, are aggressively taking action against companies on greenwashing. A recent example, a leading car manufacturer who cheated on car emissions monitoring. When the court decided that it was greenwashing, the court said it was the inability of that company to evidence the claims, the environmental claims, which led the reputational damage and greenwash branding. So the court is saying, if you cannot substantiate your environmental claims with hard evidence, you are greenwashing. Well, guess what? The evidence for our industry, some of which you've seen, shows very clearly that our industry needs to step up on environmental action. It's not enough to ask guests to reuse their towels. 
it's not enough to ask guests to have their rooms cleaned with fewer or lesser frequency. And it's not enough to replace plastic straws or plastic shampoo bottles in hotel bathrooms. It's just not enough. We have to step up to fight climate change. Now, stepping up is one thing, but we have to do it in an intelligent way. We have to do it in a way that serves people, planet, and profit. Yes, profit. Because if there's no profit, there's no business. If there's no business, there's no industry. And if there's no industry, we will be jeopardizing hundreds of millions of people's lives who depend on our industry. So profit is absolutely key. Now, given everything that I've shared with you, I expect that you're probably thinking, gosh, why on earth did she say at the start that hospitality is at the front line in the battle for a sustainable world? Well, clearly today this is true for the wrong reasons. But going forward, in fact, within the next five years, I believe that hospitality will be leading the charge on the sustainable world. Here is why. Because under the auspices of the Energy and Environment Alliance, the organization I represent, hotel asset owners and asset managers are coming together to share know-how. They are challenging the status quo. And they are working with a cohort of Brian technical experts to develop commercially viable and scientifically robust environmental, social and governance standards, which will be expected of every hotel across the planet. Every hotel. And this work is being accelerated, not just by public pressure and regulators, but it's being accelerated by the investors and the banks. If a hotel wants to borrow money for any reason at all, it's going to increasingly have to demonstrate its green credentials in order to be able to access funds from banks. You know, banks and investors are beginning to audit the properties in their portfolios. They're asking questions of the hotels. They want to know, for example, will the hotel become a stranded asset? Is it going to be flooded in the future due to extreme weather because of climate change? How much money is it going to cost, by the way, to get this building to be energy efficient, water efficient, to become a sustainable building? And guess what? Those costs are being added up and deducted from the value of the asset. So-called brown discounts, they are already being deducted from asset values in our industry. That, my friends, is a very powerful driver for change indeed. Because it really matters if today your property is worth, say, a million or 10, and tomorrow it's worth half of that, or perhaps even 25% less than that. Significant drivers to accelerate change in our industry. And profit depends, and banks depend, on information. They need data, going back to what the courts were saying, hard evidence. And that's where the standards and metrics come in. You know, for decades now, our industry has measured its success based on occupancy rates, revenue per available room, gross operating profit per available room. We need new metrics. We need new metrics which measure energy per available room, waste per available room, carbon per available room. We need to be able to know our performance in environmental, social and governance terms because that's what the banks and the investors are demanding, that's what our public is demanding, that's what the planet is demanding. And that's what our viability as a business for the future is demanding. So you see, we're very excited because we are one of the first industries in the world to adopt this tough assessment approach to ensuring that we fight sustainability the battle for a sustainable world for future generations. One of the very first industries to take this tough approach. And it's really tough, not just in terms of what we're doing and what the metrics are asking for, but remember, it's also about the how. And in our terms of how, the way that we're going about this is in line with what the banks and investors are asking for. <coughs> they want transparent, objective, credible, and robust evidence and information. No grey boxes, no grey areas, 
no self-governing, which could be loaded with greenwash. It's got to be objective, scientifically robust, transparent, and credible. So we're very excited about the fact that our industry will be the first to be able to hold itself to account on the toughest assessment um, standards and metrics in terms of environmental, social, and governance impact. Therefore, if you want to be at the heart of an industry that has sustainability at its heart and is leading the battle for sustainability from the very front, then the hospitality industry is definitely for you. Thank you.